torque <laughs> on a loop in a uniform magnetic field. So we have a constant magnetic field, which is to the right. We have a loop. The shape of this loop is going to be Circular. like a picture frame. It's going to be a rectangle, rectangular shape like this. So here is our wire. This is going to be the top view of the wire. We need to actually look at it from two different views so that we can see exactly what's going on here. We're going to have current passing through the wire, and this view is going to be um, counterclockwise. We're going to identify uh, four different sides. This will be side one, side two, side three, and side four. We're going to identify the length here as length A, and the length here as the width, if you will, of the width of B. That's the top view. I also want to look at it from a front view. In other words, if we take our picture frame, which I think will be helpful if I pull it out. This is the top view. The front view is going to look like this. So we're going to look at it from this perspective, and in the front view, we're going to have, I'm going to draw one wire like this and the other wire like this so that we can take a look at the direction of the current in those two wires. So when we look at it from the front view, this is the top, this is the front view. Don't you worry, those of you who are engineering will also have a side view eventually. We're not there yet, but right now we have a top and front. Okay. Top view, front view. In the front view, in wire two, what is the direction of the current? In wire two, what is the direction of the current? Nitish. Um, it is out, I agree. The current is down in this view, which would correspond to out in this view. So this is the current right here in wire two. What is the direction of the current in wire four in the front view? Nick. This, this is four right here. So if we go from the top view to the front view, it is going into the board here. So this would be the direction of the current in wire four. And those are important to be able to identify when we go through and derive this. So we've got the front view, we've got everything defined there. So our goal here is to figure out the torque. First off, you should identify the force on one and the force on wire three are equal and they are equal to black. Uh, zero. zero because? Uh, the angle is either 90 or 180. Theta is equal to zero degrees or theta is equal to 180 degrees regardless the sign of that angle is going to be equal to zero. So really we're looking at wires two and four. In addition, we should be able to identify that the magnitude of the force on wire two and the magnitude of the force on wire four are going to be equal. They're just going to have um, opposite directions, just like we had over here. And that is going to be equal to I L B sine theta. Okay, current. That's just current. What is the length, Sarah Jane? A. A. Magnetic field, we'll just define as the magnetic field. What is the angle here, Mo? Uh, okay, we're looking for the angle between the direction of the length and the direction of the magnetic field, for example, in four. We have the direction of the length and the direction of the magnetic field. Um, 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Nope, it's 90 degrees for both of them. doesn't matter which one we're talking about, it's going to be the sign of 90 degrees. So the magnitude of force, both of these forces are I times A times the magnetic field. Okay, the direction of these forces. Now, 
in the front view, the magnetic field is still to the right. So what is the direction of the force on wire 2 in the front view, the silk? So if you go through the current, the magnetic field is to your right and therefore the force is up, the magnetic force is going to be up on wire 2. What direction is that in the top view? Emily. Right, if we go from here to here, it's going to be out. So the magnetic force is going to be out of the page. Looking at wire four, Mohit, what's the direction of the force on wire four in the front view? Uh, Point your fingers in the direction of the current. So the current is into the board. Right. Then you curl your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, I'm just going to point out that you just did turn, the, turn it up this way rather than turning it this way, which might be easier than <laughs> just on your shoulder. And then your thumb points down. So the magnetic force is then going to be down. This is going to be force four. What direction then is the magnetic force in the top view on wire I'm sorry, here we go. So it goes, yes, I would agree with you, into the board. So force four would be into the board. So notice that in the front view, it's going to cause a torque, which is going to cause the whole thing to turn this way. That whole thing is going to turn this way. So we end up having a torque, which causes it to rotate in this direction. In the top view, it's going to rotate this way. Front view is going to rotate this way. Now, let's come back to this force. As it rotates, it's going to turn from, let's say, from here to here, for example. Did the angle change between the direction of the current and the magnetic field if we turn to here? No. So notice, even after it turns, Theta is still 90 degrees, even after it turns. Okay, well we have yet to talk about torque, which is what we're trying to find. So now we need to put torque into the situation. We have figured out the magnetic forces, and we're going to use those to figure out the torque. Torque. Equation for torque. Tim. R, uh, R cross product. The cross product of R and F, which are both vectors. Or if you prefer, R, F, sine, theta. Specifically for our example, this is going to be, um, I'm going to put R times 2 times the magnetic force times the sine of theta, right? Because if we're talking about this as our axis of rotation, we're going to have two different forces, and we're going to have, then, this is the net torque about our axis of rotation, which I've indicated in the figure. What is R, the lever arm, match? Um. Would it be close? Half of B. Half of B. B over two. Because it's going to be this distance right here, which if you follow it up, it's going to be half of what we've defined as B. We have two times the magnetic force. We just figured out the value of the magnetic force. It is current times the A, the length A times the magnetic field. Times the sine of theta. Now, theta is the angle between the force and the lever arm. When this starts to turn, do you see how that's going to change? That angle is this angle right here. The force 
continues to stay upward, but the angle is going to change. So torque, the angle for torque does change after it turns. However, the angle for the force does not change. We have twos, which are going to cancel out. And we have this is equal to I times A times B times B times the sine of theta. Two different Bs, of course. One for the capital B for the magnetic field, and one lowercase b for the length. A times lower, lowercase a times lowercase b is the area. In other words, the torque, yeah, the to yeah, we have three different, yeah, that's nice. So the torque then is equal to, the net torque is equal to the current times the area <coughs> vector times the magnetic field times the sine of the angle, or I A cross B. This is the net torque. Now, we derived this, the net torque, on a current carrying loop of, of a specific shape. Now, I'm not going to go through and do it, but understand that this is the correct, this is correct for any axis of rotation and for any shape. This torque, the net torque, which is I A cross B. The maximum torque, of course, would be with a sine of 90 degrees, which would be I A times B. Um, the area vector. You just use the right-hand rule with the current to figure out the direction of the area vector. For example, this one right here, the direction of the area vector would actually be into the page. This one, the area vector. Just like angular velocity, for example, the area vector would be out of the page. This is for a single loop. If you have many loops, that net torque is just equal to N. Note that's a capital N for the number of loops times I A cross B. Because this is for a single loop, and this is the number of loops. Because generally in a motor, you have more than a single loop. 